and welcome to the FinEd's YouTube channel. I'm Nidhan Najib, the FinEd's co-founder. Today we're going to be wrapping up our three-part video series on deferred taxes by discussing how temporary differences lead to the creation of deferred tax liabilities and how this deferred tax liability is reported on the company's financial statements. Does that sound a bit too much to digest? Don't worry, we're in this together. Here's a recap of the year-wise temporary difference resulting from the difference between the carrying amount and the tax base of Alpha's $300 asset. I'm going to be extending this example further today by making three important assumptions. Assumption number one, the profit before tax and depreciation or capital allowance is exactly identical in Alpha's P&L and tax statement and that figure comes to $1,000 in year one. Assumption number two, the applicable tax rate is 30%. Assumption number three, all the line items that come immediately before the profit before tax and depreciation or capital allowance is exactly identical in either of the two statements. Now, just to give you a heads up, whenever I refer to the tax figure in Alpha's P&L, I will be using the term tax expense. And whenever I refer to the figure in Alpha's tax statement, I will be using the term tax charge. Now, after deducting the respective depreciation and capital allowance, you will immediately notice that there's a difference in the tax charge and the tax expense. Now, here comes the tricky part. Alpha's current tax liability is equal to $246 because this figure is based on the tax charge as reported on Alpha's tax statement. What about the temporary difference? Well, it will lead to the creation of deferred tax. And this deferred tax amount is calculated each year by multiplying the temporary difference by the applicable tax rate of 30%. In the case of year one, the deferred tax is equal to $80 multiplied by 30% or $24. Now, the next question you may be asking yourself is that, is this a deferred tax liability or an asset? I'm going to be making this easier for you by letting you know that whenever the carrying amount is actually higher than the tax base of the asset, a taxable temporary difference arises. And deferred tax liabilities are always reported for taxable temporary differences. Now why a liability? Let's actually extend this example all the way to the end of year three by making one more assumption and that is that the profit before tax and depreciation or capital allowance is equal to $1,000 in each of the three years in Alpha's tax statement and profit or loss statement. A lower tax charge compared to the tax expense in years one and year two is only a temporary benefit which will turn into a future tax liability as the capital allowance falls below the depreciation charge, which is exactly what's happening in year three which will further lead to higher taxable profits and naturally a higher tax charge. Hence, it is a temporary difference, which is to be taxable in the future. So notice that term which I introduced earlier in this video, taxable temporary difference. This is exactly where this term fits in. In other words, this is a tax liability, which is to be deferred or pushed forward into the future. At the end of year one, Alpha will report a deferred tax liability equal to $24 in its non-current liability section of the statement of financial position. I hope deferred tax liabilities are a whole lot easier to understand and even the entire concept of deferred taxes. Please subscribe to the FinEd's YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. Thank you.